it's a foul's kick is no good. Fans, be what up? Someone's getting fired tonight. What's going on? You watch Panthers Post Phil Perkins. Thanks for joining. Uh, first of all, shout out to everyone who joined the live stream. Uh, it was a bit of a cluster F. Uh, I was on my own tonight, put the kid to bed. He woke up a couple times. Uh, he actually, I've now learned he's a mutant. He could see in the dark, open the door. Uh, I had a gut feeling, went outside of the studio, aka the mud room, and uh, he was standing on top of the stairs. So that was a good call on dad part. Appreciate you guys clicking on this. Um, because you're brave on multiple fronts, because the Carolina Panthers just lost the Chicago Bears on national television, 16 to three. They're one and eight, 0 and two in prime time. If you remember, if you want to remember that Monday Night Football uh, home opener for Bryce Young, Bryce Young. Now he had he definitely had a better game uh, compared to the one against the Colts, but um, someone's getting fired for sure. For sure, someone's getting fired. Um, it is a long weekend uh, for you guys. Like It's early. Someone's getting fired this weekend. And I think it's going to be the, on the offensive side of the ball. And David Tepper, they showed him on camera. And he did not look happy. He just let go of his coach, for Charlotte FC. Um the only head coaching material I see right now is a Giro Evero because the fact that the Chicago Bears scored one touchdown um, and this defense has way more injuries. Like, we had Amari Bono, Barno and DJ Johnson starting at edge. And the best player on the defense was Derek Brown and then Dante Jackson. Everybody else was just like, what the hell? Like, Frankie Louvu. I didn't really notice him much. He got stiff armed a lot by uh, Deontay Foreman. Um, Ejer Evero, what I'm saying right now is I think Frank Wright could get fired this weekend, and Thomas Brown might go with him. Unfortunately, he, he, that would be a part of it because I don't know if Thomas Brown is designing the plays or if he is just is he cooking from a menu that Frank Reich made? So he is just picking from Frank Reich plays or is he also designing plays? And then he is calling his own plays. I don't know, but the offense was pitiful. The only touchdown came from special teams. Chris Tabor, he could be a head coach, like back to back weeks. Carolina Panthers special teams has been special, has been good, has made differences in games. Now the offense was better. Bryce Young did not have a, horrible game he didn't um there were just moments where and i'll be honest on that fourth down on the third down play uh, where it could have been a dinner, in an interception uh to end the drive i think it was uh destined for uh adam thielen it looked like tmj was open it looked like terrence marsh was open deep and <sighs> Whether it's J. T. Sullivan or Kirk Herbstreit, who who literally his job was to cover college football and cover guys like Bryce Young, it seems like the problem is not Bryce; it's the speed or lack thereof on the wide receiver group. It's the offensive line, and it's the play calling. And since you can't pick up any players right now, uh, David Newton reported that the Panthers were hot on T. Higgins, Devonta Adams during the trade deadline, and Montez Sweat. So, because you can't pick anybody up right anymore, um, the only change you can make right now with the team to save Bryce, because the reports are coming in that they they love Bryce, they believe they made the right choice. They don't have second guess. They should have gotten T.J. Stroud or Anthony Richardson, who again isn't even playing the rest of the year. So, you can start the bust on him because he's already injury prone. Um, the only change you can make is with the coaching. Or the GM side. So either it's Frank Reich gets canned, Ejiro Evero becomes a head coach, Thomas Brown, the, the office coordinator, uh, or or his general manager, Scott Fitter, he is out. Because um, you can't make any personnel changes right now. The only change you can make is on the executive class. A um, couple things watching that game. It felt like, and maybe I'm a little brainwashed from watching the QB school, JTO Sullivan, who's journeyman quarterback, 300,000 subs. 
the guy knows what he's doing. Like he, very few people talk about the Panthers as much as he does in depth as he does with his experience. Over 37 minutes, the last game against Indianapolis. Who in their right mind want to break that down? Um, he talked about a couple things with this team that is missing right now. Yes, Bryce may, could, be, could be better. But he says it's next to impossible to play quarterback in this offense. Offensive line, just not blocking. It's the, it's the worst regression I've ever seen in my life watching football. Um, can't play quarterback like that. Can't play quarterback when there's absolutely no speed. Like at the top of his drop, everybody is still covered. Even with capital A anticipation, nobody's open. Nobody's even looking for the ball. No speed. And the play calling. The play calling seems to be the worst. Whether they're play calling the way they're play calling because they don't have the personnel or they're play calling because they just don't know how to call plays. But basically everything according to him is slow, static, basically running straight and stopping. No one's ever moving. Like the best plays today. The biggest plays is when guys were moving, whether it was, you know, uh, Adam Thielen or uh, not Michael Strahe, but Mike Strawn. Guys were moving. But most of the other plays, according to JT O'Sullivan, he has all 22 and he's got the quarterback eyes. It's run, stop, turn, run, stop, turn, run, stop, turn. And it just doesn't lead to anything. It doesn't lead to anything more. It doesn't let your playmakers be playmakers. And... It just made me so mad. It made me so mad watching. And I can't blame the defense because they held the team to 16 points. You should win a game if you hold the opposing team to 16 points. And I never want to see Miles Sanders on the field again. Um, I, I love Raheem Blackshear. I love my guy, Chuba Hubbard. But I, I'm down to get more running backs in the offseason. Adam Thielen's the only guy in the offense, in terms of skill position players, that I think should stay next year. He's probably a third receiver, though. Like I, I said in the stream that, again, shout out to everyone who joined that. If they can get their hands on a guy like a T. Higgins, Devontae Adams, <laughs> Jefferson, I think T. Higgins is the most likely option. And then draft a wide receiver in the top pick in the second round. Then Adam Thielen is where he should be, and that is a third receiver. You know, a possession guy, move the chains kind of guy. Everyone needs that guy, you know. Um, it was just so tough to watch because while Bryce didn't regress further, it seemed like, and you saw it on the timeline, on the X timeline, that he's just not trusting anybody. And either he's not trusting because he can't see them, and he can't see them, not because he's short, because he doesn't have time. And I think the offensive line definitely had a rebound. Like, Bryce Young was hurried, but he wasn't sacked. I don't think he was sacked often. He uses his legs more, which is awesome. Scares me a little bit. But it seems like he's very smart in the open field. But the offensive line at times gave him more time than he did again, at least last week against Indianapolis. But a lot has changed. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's the play calling. I was giving the benefits of that to Thomas Brown, but we'll have to, like I'll have to look at it again. But it looked like Bryce definitely had a better game than last week. But I think just on the outside, something's going to change, and I wouldn't be surprised if Frank Wright got jacked. and Or Scott Fitterer got jacked, because he is the last remaining guy from the Rule era, because Rule hired him. Marty Herney came in to basically disciple Matt Rule on how the NFL worked. Then Marty Herney got the, got, got the jack. Then Matt Rule and company brought in Scott Fitterer to work together. And he is the last remnant of that. And it's almost like you have to get that stink out of there. And you, and you may as well just let Frank go. Because if Frank is this boring, as I see in person, like in the media, and his offense is this boring, he's going to want a boring GM. And who's going to get boring players who can't execute what he wants or who, or who can execute what he wants, but what he wants is boring and is not working. So I don't know if you jack him and, and Scott Fitter at the same time and you elevate Jerry Evero, who out of this staff looks like the clearest to be a head coach next year from what he is doing right now. The same thing he did with Denver, he's doing with the Panthers right now. I see him getting elevated to head coach. And bring in, if Thomas Brown can show something, if he gets to cook on his own, like make his own, I don't know if he's not making his own plays or not, 
or if he gets Jack too, and they bring another offensive coordinator, Jack James Campen, and and start the process now to get GMs, and that doesn't go against the cap. And I would look at you know chief scouts with the Bengals, who you know T Higgins, um, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon, all drafted, not for aging guys. You correct me if I'm wrong. Anyone with the Kansas City Chiefs. Just anyone in the AFC, honestly. Pro scouts with the with the Bills, the Chiefs for sure, the Bengals, um, the Dolphins. I'd look at them. I'd look at them. Uh, Scott Fitter was a he was a Matt Rule guy, and if you take a look at Seattle, the way they built, never really had a good offensive line. And, yeah, I think someone's losing their job this weekend. Let me know what you guys think. There's really not much to say. It's just such a bummer. It is such a bummer. And I texted some people that I'm meeting through this process, which is great. But I think next year will be better. Depending on who's making the picks. I think the reason why they didn't let go of players or let go of picks is because I think there's going to be a new GM at the helm. And they want to give them at least something in the war chest. But I think someone's getting fired. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's Frank Reich. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Scott Fitterer. I wouldn't be surprised if it's both.